This thing is so freaking cool, I can't even believe it. It's like a tricorder. So today, we are gonna do some surface mount soldering. And we are gonna build this. This is an Electro Slush 3. It only has a handful of surface mount parts on it. And we're gonna go ahead and build it. So let's get started here. So if you've watched any of my videos from before, you know that I like to start with giving this thing a spritz of some uh, isopropyl alcohol. I wanna make sure that the board is nice and clean, that the pads are not covered with any kind of oily residue or, or anything like that, so that we're starting with nice clean board. And this ensures that we'll have a nice clean build, okay? So with that out of the way, the other thing you should know when you're working with surface mount is that the regular kind of solder that I use through hole, this is way, way, way too thick. This is entirely too thick. I have a different solder that I use for this kind of work and it looks something like this. It's much, much thinner. I think this is 0.3 millimeter in diameter. So it's much, much thinner. And if you compare these two, you see that it's like an entirely different level of thinness here. And this is what you need. If you use this, you end up with big, you know, goopy balls of solder on the pads, which is too much. And um, it's, it's, it's not easy to work with, it's, it's not good. The other thing to note is that the tip of your solder should be as thin as possible, right? This is a 0.4 millimeter thick uh, tip. It's one of the thinnest ones that Metcal happens to make, and that's the one I'm gonna use for this project. For all the other ones, I use something much, much thicker, something like this, you know, if I'm doing through hole work, but in the case of surface mount, thin is good. Okay, now not a lot of parts and a lot of this stuff is just uh, resistors and capacitors. So one thing you might consider doing if you're getting into surface mount is get one of these. This is called a sample book. I got this one from China, as you can see. It's basically a book that has all of the different or most of the different uh, resistor and capacitor values. And so if you look, each one of these is a resistor or a capacitor and they're all in here. So. This is a good thing to have, even if you have all the parts, like sometimes one goes missing or you lose something or you sneeze and like parts fly off and, uh, and you need a couple spares, having one of these can really save you. So I highly recommend getting one of these. So the first part that I need is a 1K. I'm gonna put this off to the side. And the way that I work, I only have one thing out at a time. That's it. So I take one thing out, take as many of the parts as I need from this tape, put them on my work surface, put them on the board, put this back, and then move on to the next part. If you have multiple parts, these are very difficult to read. You may lose track and put the wrong part on and then you're in for a world of hurt. So being organized here is key. And I do that by only having one part out at a time. That's my method. Other people I'm sure have different ways of working, but that's how I do it. Okay, so we see here in the schematic that there are three 1K resistors. They're in positions R3, R4, and R11, okay? Now on the board, if you look closely, the silk screen actually says the name of the position. There's R3, there's R4, and R11 is down here. There's many ways of getting surface mount parts onto the board, but the easiest way is to use an iron and what I do is take your iron, heat up one of the pads for let's say R3, right? And you bring the solder in. And now you've got, if you take a close look here, there's solder on one of the pads for R3, okay? Now we know we're gonna need three 1K resistors. So I'm gonna take three of these out of the strip. They're right here, they're very hard to see, but they're there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this back because I'm not gonna need this anymore. And then we're gonna take the, the tweezers like so. You can see the part at the end of it. And we're just gonna put the part on top of the, the solder, all right? And then what I like to do is put just a 
gentlest pressure on top of the part and then touch the the solder to melt it again and now that part is on there with one of the pads okay I'll, I'll have a close-up shot of this next so you can see it but you can see that the part is now on there and it's soldered onto one of the two pads and then you can just rotate the board like so and solder the part onto the next pad for R3 and finish the process like so okay so we just put one part on there this is Super quick, I think people make a bigger deal out of this than it needs to be. This is not a complicated or difficult process. So let me switch the camera so you can take a closer look from a closer angle on the macro lens and then we'll do the same thing for resistor R4 and R11. So here we go from a closer angle. And uh, the next part we're doing is R4, which is down here. It's these two. So touch the pad. Get that nice and hot and then get some solder on there just like that and then use your tweezers to pick up the part now this electro slush is actually using 0805 components 0805 is a type of sizing these parts here are actually 0603 but that's okay because these will work in this product so just bring it in like so hold it down move the iron away and there you go Notice you want to work quickly. You don't want to hold the iron on there for a long period of time because then you can start burning the pad, uh, lifting the pad or burning the part itself. And, and you don't want to do that. That's, that's not good for the part. But you also want to make sure that the solder actually wicks to both the pad and the part. All right, so next up, we're going to rotate the part so that you can see what's going on here. All right, so what I'm going to do is take the tip of the iron and touch both the the pad and the part and get both those parts hot you get a nice clean solder all right let's walk through that one more time nice and up close okay so take the tip of the iron touch the pad like so bring the solder in just like that so you get a little bit of solder on one pad then you pick up your part with your tweezers bring it in like so what you can do is actually melt the solder and bring the part in or you can just rest the part on top of the solder that is now hardened and put a little bit of downward pressure and then just and then just touch it for just a second. You see the solder melts and adheres to the part and the pad, pulls it down to the surface of the circuit board. And we can do the last leg of this part here. Like that, bring it in, and away you go. And once you get the hang of this, there's nothing complicated about doing this. It's, it's actually quite easy. And I think it's actually much faster to do surface mount work than it is to do through hole. Cause you don't have to turn the board around, bend the legs and then cut the legs when you're done soldering and then throw the legs away. You don't have to do any of that. You just put the solder on, put the part on, solder it, and then move on to the next part. So the other thing that people get intimidated by is the ICs or this guy right here. See, it says IC1. This is a SOIC8 package. Incidentally, this is a very interesting part. This is an operational amplifier. Op amps can cost, you know, on the bottom end, maybe 50 cents, maybe 75 cents for a cheap op amp. But that's the kind of stuff you see in a lot of audio stuff. But this is a TI part. And it's made by the division of TI, formerly known as Burr Brown. And this is actually $6. This one little thing is six bucks. So it's about 10 times more expensive than a similar type of op amp. And this is ridiculously, ridiculously high performing, very low noise, and just an all around great, great part. You, they probably use this in a lot of high end stereo systems and recording things. What's funny is this device, the Electro Slush, is actually designed to pick up noise. So we're using a ultra high spec, you know, ultra high performance op amp to basically to record noise. So I just found that to be a very interesting and funny use case of this part. So the process of doing ICs is exactly the same as, as resistors and all the other components. It's just that you have multiple legs to solder, okay? So these guys need to be plugged in in the right orientation. If you do this wrong, you're really gonna screw things up and make life difficult for yourself, okay? 
and you'll see that there's a dot right there which indicates that that's pin one okay so this guy right there right next to it next to that dot is pin one and on the board you will see usually some kind of indication saying that you know either this is pin one or this is pin one so that when you put this part on here you actually do it the right way and you don't accidentally put the part in this orientation you don't want to do that that would be very bad that would probably kill the part so we see there's a dot right there that says pin one and we also see if you look closely that the do you see how this side of the of the part is actually sort of slanted there's there's like an angle right there on on this edge but not on the other side and if you look closely on the board you'll see that there's two lines two vertical lines right next to each other and that indicates that yeah that angle that you see that 45 degree bevel needs to go on that side of the panel okay so like i said the process is the same as any other component the recommended way of doing this is to take one pad it doesn't matter which one i like to go with one of the corners and just put a little bit of solder on there and then you can soften that solder and slide the part into place and then move the soldering iron away okay so now you've got just that one leg soldered to that pad and you can check to make sure that the part is on nice and straight and that the orientation is okay and you know it's not coming in at a weird angle so this is just right if you look like that you can see that the legs are on the pads everything is nice and straight and nothing funny nothing crooked if there was something crooked well you can just soften up the part take this part away clean off the pad and then try again okay so just heat up the pad and the leg and just bring it in just like that two three and four so now we've just done half of this chip okay there's more advanced techniques where you can just drag the solder across and do all the legs in one go uh, that's a more advanced technique that I will leave for another video because it is not necessary to do that here but yeah just bring the solder in like so there's one there's two three and four okay so if you look now you see that all the parts are soldered on there you might want to reflow this first one and in fact what i like to do is go back and that very first one that i tacked on there i like to just melt it and then give it just a little bit more solder and now you can see that the part is on there. It's looking pretty okay. And it's nice and flat up against the bottom of the board there. You know, you want to do clean work. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as the leg of the part is touching the pad and the solder is connecting the two, it's fine. I mean, aesthetically, you want to do this and make it look nice, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on. So shout out to Jonas Grushka of LOM Instruments. You can find out more about his products at lom.audio. That's .audio, not .com. He's the designer of this product, and he has been cool enough to open source the project, which is why I was able to get a surface mount PCB of it. But if you wanna do a through-hole version or just buy the finished product, you should go over and help support his business. I think he makes cool products. So, with that, we should have a complete build. So let's go plug it in and see what it does. There's all kinds of really interesting sounds happening right here on this desk. And this lets you hear those sounds. Right there in the air. All kinds of electromagnetic noises. A lot of activity inside the computer. A lot of bits being processed. The 
even the recorder itself. It's outputting all kinds of really interesting sounds. Not a semi-random phenomenon. Ooh. What about my old camera? Incidentally, this is what I shot the first few episodes of Leo Makes with. Oh. about when it focuses. Oh. Cool. What about the dig attacked? about a an iPhone You can get really meta and actually check out the camera itself. You hear that? You hear the motors focusing? We're trying to. Man, this thing is so cool. I love it because these sounds, if you try to recreate these sounds as a sound designer, think about all the layers of sound that you'd have to first construct and all the envelopes that you'd have to put on those sounds to get this much sort of rich complexity of sound. And with this thing, you just point and see what you get. It's just fascinating the sounds you can get from this thing. You can sample them and use them in, say, the Digitact. Or you could plug it into a modular synth and use this as a CV source. Very complex CV source, but an interesting one nonetheless. So I love this thing. I, I can't believe how much I've enjoyed using this thing over the last couple of hours today. Just pointing it at things around the house and listening. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've gotten something out of it. And if you have, I hope you will click that like button, smash that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.